Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rose Wright and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction. The art in my thumbnail is by Swirl Lily on Instagram. Her work is absolutely amazing so please check it out. Link in the description box. This story was actually written by Mike Zeno on AO3 and he has asked me to narrate it for him. He is an amazing writer so make sure you check him out at the link below. Without further ado, please enjoy Anesthesia. Written by Mike Zeno. Narrated by Rose Wrights. Anesthesia. This story is written such that it fits with established canon and takes place between seasons three and four. This is so dangerous, Marinette! Tiki said to me, her eyes wide and pleading. So is Hawk Moth, I insisted. And he's getting more dangerous every day. What happened to Cat is just the beginning, Tiki. He has Master Fu's tablet with the translated grimoire. He can access all the same power-ups that we can, and who knows what else. He's willing to do whatever it takes to win. I can't do any less. If there's even a chance I can find out who he is, then that could change everything. But what if he finds out who you are? I'll just have to be stronger than him, I said with a lot more conviction than I felt. I was well aware of how risky this was. I felt I had taken all possible precautions. But if something went wrong, then I knew I could lose everything. Everything. But Hawk Moth had to be stopped. Every time he released an Akuma, Cat and I had to win. But Hawk Moth only had to win once. And it would all be over. There was no telling what he intended once he got hold of the Ladybug and Black Cat Miraculous. But considering the lengths he'd been willing to go, it had to be something with terrible consequences. People could die. I couldn't have that on my conscience, not when there was something I might have been able to do about it, but didn't have the courage. I took a deep breath. I read through the message I was about to send to Cat Noir one last time, even though by now I knew it by heart. I checked that everything was in place for when it was all over, and I came back. Assuming I came back as Marinette, and not as something twisted and horrible. I didn't feel like the guardian of the miraculous. I felt like a 15-year-old girl who just wished she could talk to her parents about this. I whispered, For whatever happens next, for whatever I do, I'm sorry, Tiki. Please don't do this, Marinette! She begged one last time. I have to try, Tiki. I have to. I took a deep breath, shuddering breath, and forced myself to let it out evenly. Then I looked my tiny friend in her eyes, those eyes which so clearly reflected the fear in my own. I had never noticed until that moment that they were the exact same blue. Tiki, I said, taking my earrings off and placing them into the Kwame's tiny hands. I, I renounce you. Three days earlier, Miraculous Ladybug! I tossed the spotted pipe wrench high into the air, releasing the magical cloud of tiny glowing ladybugs which swooped around Paris, sending all the remaining skeletons back into the catacombs from which they had come, and restoring Notre Dame to its clean white limestone rather than the burning black obsidian which had temporarily transformed it into something like a gate into the underworld. I didn't see any of it, though. I had run immediately to Cat Noir's side, taking his hand and wishing with all my might that the restorative magic of the ladybugs would be enough. Then they finally swept over him, and to my vast relief the bleeding gash in his side vanished as though it had never been there. The look of pain which he had tried to hide from his face immediately eased, and he grinned at me the only way Cat Noir can grin. Cancel my appointment with the vet, he said. I hugged him feeling a pair of tears I had held back until that moment slip over the top of my mask and down my cheeks. Not funny, I said through my teeth. Hey, milady, Cat replied, his voice soft and tender. It's okay, I'm all right. Even the rip in the suit is gone. You fixed everything just like you always do. But what if I didn't? I said, pulling back to look him in the eyes. This has never happened before, Cat. Sure, we've been knocked around a bit, but this is the first time one of us got really hurt. What if that sword had stabbed you through the chest? I don't know if the miraculous ladybugs can bring someone back from that, and I don't want to have to find out. 
I'm kind of surprised it could cut through the suit at all, Cat mused. Don't thank you the, um, ladybug, Cat Noir? We both looked up at the small, timid voice. In my distress, I had forgotten all about the Akuma victim. She stood there on the plaza looking utterly lost and confused, her lips quivering as if she were trying hard not to cry. She was much younger than I had thought she was, as the Akuma had made her twelve feet tall and given her a skull for a face. The poor girl couldn't have been more than ten years old. I... I got akumatized, didn't I? She said, and then she began crying in earnest. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I said, leaving Cat Noir and going over to give her a hug instead. She was a tiny thing, her head resting just below my chest. What's your name? Marinette, she sobbed. I involuntarily froze for just a moment, then relaxed. She obviously hadn't recognized me. It was just a coincidence. There were a lot of Marinettes in Paris, after all. That's a very pretty name, I said, pulling back so I could look her in the eyes and smile. I know someone else named Marinette. She's a really smart and brave girl, just like I'm sure you are. I'm not so brave. She said, still crying. Antony and his friends scared me with those creepy skeleton masks. I I just wanted them to know what it felt like. She fell into my shoulder and cried some more. Hey, Marinette, I said, softly stroking her hair. We all get scared sometimes. I get scared, too. You? She said, astonishment overcoming her sobs. But you're Ladybug. You're a superhero. How could you be scared of anything? Actually, I get scared all the time, I told her. She didn't need to know that the thing which had terrified me the most recently was something that she'd done herself, even though she wasn't to blame. So I went on. Every time someone gets akumatized, I feel afraid for them. But that's part of what makes me want to help them so much. Being brave isn't about not being scared. It's about keeping it together and doing what you need to do, even though you're afraid. And besides, having someone jump out at you wearing a skeleton mask would scare anyone for a moment. My earrings beeped. I didn't have much time. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I said to the little girl, wiping the tears gently away from her cheeks with my thumbs. I'm going to change back, and you know that superheroes can't let anyone know their secret identities. Cat Noir can take you home. You know it, Bugaboo. Come here, Marinette. Ladybug is right, by the way. That's a really pretty name. Wow, you're totally handsome up close. She said with that blatant honesty that children often have. Why, thank you, fair maiden. Cat replied grandly, kneeling down and kissing her hand. Even though her cheeks were already red from crying, I could see her blush a little further after that. Now I have to take you home over the rooftops if we're going to get there before my time runs out. But if you get scared, just close your eyes tight. I'm not going to be scared of this. She said brightly, obviously thrilled at the idea of a high-speed journey across Paris in Cat Noir's arms. Meet me at the Eiffel Tower after you had a chance to recharge. I said to Cat in a forced, casual tone. The look he gave me told me he knew I was a lot more serious than I was letting on. Take care, Marinette. Bug out. I'm fine, really, Cat insisted as I tried to check his side where the sword had cut him. I can't even tell that I was hurt. The ladybugs fixed it right up. But you were hurt, I insisted. And the worst part is, I don't know how it happened. The suits are supposed to make us practically invulnerable, so how did that sword cut you? If Hawkmoth has discovered some kind of new power-up for his Akuma victims, then we could be in serious trouble. I wish Master Fu was here. I finished muttering the last with a hopeless shake of my head. I miss him too, Cat said. But there's no guarantee you would have known what to do about this. In fact, he probably didn't know. I'm sure he would have told us if he even suspected there was something that could hurt us through the suits. I'll bet you're right, though. Hawkmoth likely used some kind of power-up. That means that there is something we can do about it. If he's using miraculous magic to boost his own power, then we can use it to counter him. If we even had the slightest idea how to do it, I muttered. And even if we figured something out, Hawkmoth would come up with a new way to attack us, and it would just keep escalating.
What if he finds a way to stop the miraculous ladybugs? I don't want to see Paris turned into a war zone because of us. Because of him, Cat insisted, his face hard. This is not happening because of us. It's happening because Hawkmoth cares more about his own agenda than anything or anyone else. He's the bad guy here, Ladybug. Don't ever forget that. I know, I said. But it doesn't change the fact that we're the ones who have to stop him. And we can't keep up the stalemate forever. We have to win every time, Cat. He only has to win once. I paused. We have to find out who he is. I'm all for that idea, but unfortunately we don't have the slightest idea how to do that. My mind was racing. We've been reactive all this time. I said more to myself than to Cat. Hawkmoth akumatizes someone, we respond. He comes up with a bigger and better plan, and we respond. He uses his power to turn our friends against us, and we respond. Wars aren't won on defense. We have to take the fight to him. I like the way you think, milady, but Hawkmoth might as well be a ghost. Sure, he's put in an appearance once or twice, but something tells me he'll be staying under whatever rock he calls home for the foreseeable future. He knows how risky it is to reveal himself to us directly. Every time he has, it's ended with himself or Mayura in a tight spot. He won't be doing it again unless he has a major advantage. We can't wait for that. Not anymore. Things got real today, Cat. The ladybugs cleaned your blood up off the street, not from my memory. Well, sure, it sounds pretty dramatic when you... What if it had been me? I interrupted. Cat went silent, the playful light in his eyes instantly dying. Okay. Your point is made, he mumbled. But even if we're in agreement that we need to do something, we still don't really have anywhere to start. And it's not like no one has tried to find out who Hawkmoth is. I've done some of my own research when I'm not in the mask, and it's pretty hopeless. There are theories on the internet claiming that Hawkmoth is anyone from Mary Bourgeois and Nicolas Cage. The police aren't getting anywhere. I don't think they even have any suspects. I heard the Interpol got involved during the last year, but nothing seems to have come of their investigations. He even got a spot on the American FBI's most wanted list after New York, and if they've made any progress at all, it sure doesn't show. What can we do to find him that's not already being done? We have the only thing he really wants, I pointed out. That gives us some advantage. It would be fairly redundant to offer ourselves up as bait, Cat pointed out. That's his agenda already, to bring us out into the open. That's true. And Hawkmoth isn't an idiot. He'd know there was a trap if we marched down the Champs-Élysées and challenged him openly. I rubbed my eyes, feeling the lateness of the hour. We're not going to figure this out tonight. Let me think on it out of costume for a while, see what I can come up with. Okay, just don't leave me out of the loop, Cat said. Whatever your plan is, we should talk about it before trying anything, because I'm sure it's going to be risky at best. I hear you, I said. Come on, LB, this is me. I know that if you come up with something dangerous and it's the only way, you'll want to take on all the risk yourself. Don't just say that you hear me. Tell me to my face that you won't do that. I won't do anything without telling you first, I said, looking him in the eyes and consciously not blinking. I wasn't sure it was a promise I'd be able to keep. The brooch of the butterfly grants the power of transmission, Tiki said to me the following evening. Thankfully, there had been no Akuma attack the day after Cat Noir had been cut. I wondered if perhaps the incident had shaken up Hawk Moth as well. I preferred to believe that despite all evidence to the contrary, he had at least some basic human decency, and maybe it had also shaken him up a bit to see what he'd done. Or, more likely, everyone in his range had just been in a good mood today. Master Fu and I had talked about it before, of course, but I asked Tiki to once again tell me everything she knew about the Butterfly Miraculous, to see if something struck me that I'd previously missed. The Kwame of the Butterfly is Nuru, she went on. The wielder pins the brooch on and says the transformation words, Wings rise to access its power. The detransformation words are, Wings fall. Once transformed, the holder, in this case, Hawkmoth, is granted the ability to grant superpowers to others and to make that person their devoted follower. About that, I interrupted. I always wondered about it. 
It seems to me that the miraculous jewels grant power which can be used for good or evil, depending on exactly how they are used. But to take control of someone like that, it just seems to me that it would be an inherently evil thing to do. Well, it's not quite as simple as that, Tiki explained. Nehru explained it to me once. Think of it as the voices you have in your own head telling you right from wrong. You know those cartoons we watched once where the character is trying to decide something, and they get this little angel on one shoulder and a little demon on the other one, and they argue it out? It's a little like that, except the wielder of the butterfly can silence the selfish voice, taking its place. It makes it so that the one who is granted powers can only do what they feel is right with some guidance from the miraculous holder. That doesn't sound like what Hawkmoth does. That's because it isn't. Tiki said her voice as dark as her high, squeaky, cute voice would possibly get. Somehow, he's found a way to reverse the way the control is supposed to work. He silences his victim's good and altruistic instincts instead, so that all they care about is their own selfish desires and whatever Hawkmoth tells them. Hawkmoth deliberately looks for people who are good and selfless, because those are the ones he can most easily control once he takes over that voice. The people who listen to that side of themselves and follow their conscience make supervillains he can use. That's... that's disgusting. I said, shuddering at the thought. I didn't think I could despise Hawkmoth any more than I did, but knowing that he deliberately sought to corrupt the best sort of people made me loathe him even more. Fortunately, they don't have to live with remembering what they did while they were akumatized, Tiki said. Master Fu explained it to me once. It's like how his memory was wiped when he gave over the guardianship to you. Since the one who has granted powers isn't usually a miraculous holder, they have to forget what happened just in case they learned more than they should. But... Tiki said, frowning slightly. I think that since Hawkmoth changed how it works, some of his victims do remember. Remember how Chloe was after she became Miracle Queen? She told the class she didn't remember what happened. I recalled shaking my head. But I was there right afterward. I'm sure she knew exactly what she was doing. And she remembered every moment of it. I think so, too. That probably means that the people who want to be akumatized can remember the experience. That was the thing that really started the wheels turning in my head. They remember. I said softly, staring ahead at nothing. What is it, Marinette? I was thinking quickly now, as if I held a lucky charm in my hand and the ideas of how to use it flashed through my brain. Tiki, remember the time you and all the other Kwamis tried to get in touch with the Nuru on his cycle? Sure, what about it? You were trying to find out where he was. But instead, Hawkmoth used the connection to figure out where all of you were. Isn't that what happened? Yes, we broke contact before he found us. The power of transmission works both ways, I continued. Hawkmoth can communicate with his Akuma victims, see through their eyes, and sense their location. Tiki, what if it were possible to reverse that? What if the Akumatized person could get into Hawkmoth's head, maybe even see where he's hiding? I don't think that would work. Hawkmoth is too powerful. He would be able to stop whoever tried. But maybe he could be taken by surprise. I went on. Maybe someone could get just a glimpse. It might be enough, Tiki. Tiki's eyes went wide. Marinette, I hope you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. Just hear me out, I insisted. Suppose I got myself akumatized on purpose. I would be able to remember what happens because it wouldn't be against my will. And maybe I could get just a peek through Hawkmoth's eyes and see. Marinette, you can't be akumatized. You're Ladybug. Hawkmoth would make you turn over your earrings and you would do it because he would have total control over you. If I knew what was happening, I could resist. No, Marinette! Didn't you hear what I said before? Hawkmoth has the most control over people who are good and selfless and you... You're the most selfless person I've ever known. You'd be completely under his power and you would give him the ladybug earrings without a moment of hesitation. Not if I wasn't wearing them, I said. If I don't have them, I can't hand them over. And you said yourself, my most selfish instincts would still be there. 
It's hardly in my own self-interest to tell Hawkmoth that I'm Ladybug. Marinette, I love you, but you're being crazy. This just isn't a good plan. Without you, there's no Ladybug to capture the Akuma. So even if Cat Noir managed to break you free, it would multiply and infect hundreds of others. Besides, you know Cat would never go along with this. Cat Noir can handle the Akuma, I said. He can use his cataclysm on it. I don't really like the idea of killing a butterfly, but... Have you ever tried to catch a butterfly in your bare hand? Tiki shouted, waving her arms. It's not an easy thing to do! I had never seen her this agitated before. I started to have some doubts about this plan. If Tiki were so dead set against it, then maybe it was a bad idea. Would it work, though? Would Cat Noir's cataclysm destroy the Akuma? Yes, Tiki sighed. But he'd only get one chance at it. A free Akuma only needs a few seconds before it starts multiplying, and if that happens, then there's no way he could stop all of them. I know there's a lot that can go wrong, but... But nothing, Marinette! We need to come up with a different plan. This would put you and all of Paris in serious danger. Tiki and I continued to talk into the night, but there was an elephant in the room, and we couldn't pretend to ignore it forever. It occurred to me that Tiki had to do what I asked. I could just insist that we use my plan, and she would have no choice but to go along with it. But I would never want to treat her that way. She's not my slave. She's my friend. If I made her do something like this against her will, then I'm no better than Hawk Moth. The next night, we didn't get any further. Tiki, we're talking in circles, I said. Either we keep doing what we've been doing and things just get worse and worse as Hawk Moth becomes more desperate, or we go with plan A. We've been over that, Tiki said. And we haven't come up with anything better. We're not going to either. You know it, and I know it. Marinette, it's not... Answer me this, Tiki, I said, turning narrow eyes on the little Kwame. If Cat Noir had died, could I have brought him back? Tiki's mouth opened, then closed. Then she turned her eyes downward. No, she whispered. You could have healed him, even if he was just on the edge of dying. But there is a point of no return. The miraculous ladybugs can't bring someone back to life once they're gone. And if other people die during the Akuma fight? Innocent bystanders? Innocent children? You know the answer, Marinette. Has it happened already and I just didn't know about it? I asked, a lump of panic rising in my throat. I... I don't think so. Tiki said, still unable to look at me. People die every day, of course, and sometimes it happens to be while you're fighting an Akuma victim. But I don't think anyone has died yet because of the Akuma. I can't be sure, though. Tiki looked as close to tears as I had ever seen her. I felt terrible for doing this to her. She already knew the possibilities we both faced. The chance that we might be in some way responsible for someone losing their life. She clearly tried not to think about it, but I had forced her to. But we couldn't pretend these unpleasant truths didn't exist. Not anymore. Tiki, don't you see? We have to end this before something happens that I can't fix afterwards. If there were another way we could find Hawk Moth, I would take it. I can't ask someone else to do this for me, either. It has to be me. I don't have the right to put anyone else through this. Tiki drew in a deep breath and composed herself. Everything you just said is true she said. But I just can't, Marinette. I'll have to do it without you then, I said, feeling my stomach turn over as I did. Tiki and I had never been at odds like this before, but I knew in my heart and my mind that this was what I had to do. I have some things I need to do to make this work. Please don't try to stop me, Tiki. I'm doing this because I have to. The next day. Tiki, I... I renounce you. I could never forget the look on her face as Tiki vanished into the ladybug earrings. The silent pleading, the despair mingled with the tiniest sliver of hope. But I could still change my mind, turn back, give up on the whole idea. And that was why I couldn't let myself hesitate now. I read over the text message I had already sent to Cat Noir just before I had said those terrible words. Cat. 
I don't have time to explain everything. Do you remember Marinette Dupenchang? I think she's about to be akumatized, and there's nothing I can do. I'm trapped with a bunch of people in my civilian identity, and there's no way I can transform without giving away my secret to everyone around me. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to handle this one without Ladybug. And you'll have to save your cataclysm to use it on the Akuma, because I won't be there to catch and purify it. I know it's a lot to ask. I wouldn't ask this of anyone else, but you can do it. I have every confidence in you. Ladybug. That message would bring him to my balcony within minutes, I knew. If only I could have waited to send it. If only I could have waited to send it. If only I could have waited to send it, but of course it was necessary to send it before I renounced Tiki. Without her, I didn't have Cat Noir in my contacts list. I had to act quickly. I unlocked the miracle box with the magical key and then pulled out the miraculous of the turtle, opening it to allow the tiny Kwame within to emerge and float in the air before me. Yes, guardian? Waze asked, blissfully unaware of what had been happening. You are the Kwame of protection, I said to him. Take this and protect it at all costs. The key to the miraculous box? Are you in danger? There's no time for questions, Waze. Just get it as far away from me as you can. Come back in one day and give it to Ladybug, not Marinette. Ladybug. Do you understand? Yes, Marinette, but I... Go now, Waze. At once, mistress. Waze replied and zoomed out of the window with the key in his hands. I shut the box again and heard the magical locks click. It couldn't be opened now, not until Waze returned with the key, so the miracle box was as safe as I could make it without renouncing my own guardianship. That left only the earrings, and this part of the plan had been perhaps the craziest of all. But it had been all I could think of without Tiki's help. I picked up the earrings from the table where they had dropped after Tiki vanished, and returned them to their jewel box, sliding that into a padded envelope I had ready. But wait! Despite all my planning, I suddenly realized I had forgotten something. Something important. The Akuma needed a physical object. Something it could be drawn into. Something which could be broken so as to let it free in the end. I had no time. I looked frantically about and my eyes found the small charm which Adrian had given me. The twin to the one I had given him. I hated the idea that this cherished gift would be corrupted and then eventually broken and there would be no miraculous ladybugs to repair it afterward. But I also knew that the object should be something personal, something with meaning. And it was all I could find. I grabbed it and shoved it into my pocket. I left my room via the balcony and clambered down the fire escape, then ran down the street to the mailbox at the corner. Am I really doing this? I thought. Even as I slipped the envelope into the steel box, letting the heavy door slam shut. There. The earrings were out of my reach, and I had timed it so that the mail truck would be here to take them away within a few minutes. Even if Hawk Moth somehow figured out who I was, I would have no way to get my hands on the earrings for the next full day. Until they were delivered back to the bakery. There was no way he could force me to hand them over until then. And if it took that long, then the plan would likely have failed anyway. Time to move. I wanted to get as far away as possible in the hopes that when my parents heard about the Akuma attack, they wouldn't feel the need to check on me. I grabbed my bicycle and pedaled off towards the Eiffel Tower. I have to sell it, I thought. I can't do this halfway. I need to draw Hawk Moth's attention, make him think I'll be his ideal next target. If he can tell that I'm faking it, then the whole thing is a bust. Fortunately, I hardly had to fake it. I had nothing else at the moment, if not some very real, very painful anxieties. I got off my bicycle in a small park within sight of the Eiffel Tower, dropping it on the ground and ducking behind a tree. I didn't want anyone to see me and perhaps try to comfort me. In a way, this would be rather cathartic. I felt like I had been holding back my fears and despair for well over a year. Now I could finally just let it all come out and overwhelm me. Of course, most of my concerns were about Hawk Moth himself and the responsibilities I had as Ladybug. But Tiki had said that Hawk Moth could only sense emotions, not exact thoughts. He would be able to tell how worried I was. And perhaps even that it was he himself which drove me to despair, but not specifically that I was Ladybug. I hoped that was true in any event. 
Tiki had warned me that since Hawkmoth had altered the butterfly's power, there was really no way to be completely sure what he could sense and what he couldn't. I was taking a big chance, and I knew it. I took out Adrian's charm, holding it in both hands as I sat down, and settled my forehead onto my knees. This is never going to work, I thought involuntarily. Tried to push the thought away, and then realized that was exactly what I shouldn't do. This isn't going to work, I thought again. Hawkmoth is going to akumatize all my friends over and over again, and I can't stop him. Nothing I can do will stop him. I thought of each of my friends and how they had been forced to do Hawkmoth's bidding. The sickening way that the purple cloud would consume them, transform them into a parody of their own deep-seated fears, twisted in mind and soul, and I couldn't stop him. Poor Ivan, so sweet and well-meaning, turned into a stone monster and nearly destroying his own heart's desire. Nathaniel, whose attraction to me was the catalyst that turned him into a monster. Madame Bustier, whose love for her students had been perverted into something evil. Even my own father. And it had been my fault. So many had been my fault. I didn't even realize myself how much tension I had been holding back. These weren't fake emotions. It had already gone beyond just trying to fool Hawkmoth. The floodgates had opened, and I felt the tears streaming down my face as I saw all the people I loved transformed into monsters. All because I wasn't strong enough to protect them. I hated Hawkmoth. Hated all he had done to me and to everyone else he touched with his evil. And what about Adrian? So far, he had been spared. But what if Hawkmoth's Akumas found him? What would he become? I knew what would turn him, what would make him vulnerable. It would be his father, for certain. And Hawkmoth would use that and turn Adrian into a hateful creature whose need for love and understanding would become an insatiable drive for vengeance until he had destroyed everything he once loved. An image flashed into my mind then, a white suit which should have been black. My beloved partner and trusted companion turned into something evil and remorseless. All the world reduced to dust because of what Hawkmoth had done to him. No! I shouted out loud past Karen who saw me, who heard me, who wondered what I was doing there. Don't hurt them anymore! Take me instead! I opened my eyes, blinking against the bright sun turned hazy and distorted through unshed tears. And then it flickered and went dim. And I saw the black butterfly shape approaching. My heart leapt into my throat, time seemed to slow to a crawl, and in that same moment, from the corner of my eye, I saw Cat Noir charging toward me, his eyes wide and his mouth open with a cry that had yet to reach my ears. I'm sorry, I thought, and then the black butterfly touched the charm in my hand. Thank you so much for listening. This turned out to be a pretty long one, so I will be breaking it up into two parts. I really hope you enjoyed it, so please leave a like and a comment telling me that you did, and go check out Mike. Uh, his links are in the comment below. He's amazing. And send him some love. As always, stay miraculous.